In the sweltering deserts of Iran and the crowded streets of Mumbai, a silent legacy pulses through the veins of thousands, unseen, undisturbed, unbroken. For over 3,000 years, the followers of Zoroastrianism, one of the world's oldest monotheistic religions, have preserved a sacred identity. But not just through ritual, through blood. Their temples whisper of fire and eternity. Their prayers, chanted in Avestan, echo a cosmic battle between good and evil. Yet behind the chants and symbols lies something far more enduring, hidden in the very strands of DNA. Recently, scientists unlocked ancient genetic data from long-buried bones in Iran and cross-referenced them with modern-day Zoroastrian communities in both Iran and India. What they discovered was astonishing. A preserved genetic thread, isolated, intact, resistant to time, conquest, and migration. How could a spiritual belief shape a genetic lineage so precisely? across millennia and continents. What does this genetic mirror reveal about a people who refuse to disappear? And can ancient DNA finally expose the true extent of Zoroastrianism's forgotten legacy? Long before the rise of Islam, Christianity, or even classical Greece, a prophet named Zarathustra, also known as Zoroaster, walked the plains of ancient Persia. Around 1200 BCE, he preached a radical idea, a universe divided by truth and lies, light and shadow, good and evil. It wasn't just religion, it was revolution. Zoroastrianism became the state faith of powerful empires like the Achaemenids, Parthians, and Sassanids, guiding kings and shaping law, science, and cosmology. But history turned. Arab conquests swept across Persia in the 7th century, bringing Islam and forcing Zoroastrians into retreat. Many fled eastward to the shores of India, where they became known as the Parsis. Others stayed, surviving quietly in dwindling communities across Iran. Today, fewer than 200,000 Zoroastrians remain globally, yet their cultural footprint is vast. They preserved ancient rituals, fire temples, and sacred texts for over three millennia. But what they couldn't control was their own invisibility in the genetic record. Until now, because beneath centuries of religious persecution, migration, and intermarriage, something endured, something hidden in the genome, a biological fingerprint that refused to vanish. Just how deeply did Zoroastrianism shape the people who followed it? And could ancient DNA finally prove that this faith didn't just guide souls, but rewrote bloodlines? It began with a handful of ancient bones. Buried deep in the scorched soil of Yazd, Iran, a city still considered sacred by modern Zoroastrians, archaeologists unearthed skeletal remains believed to date back nearly 2,500 years. They weren't kings or priests, just ordinary people, preserved in time by arid winds and ceremonial care. Yet within their bones lay the first clue to a mystery no one expected to solve. Meanwhile, across the sea in India, geneticists studying the Parsi community stumbled onto something strange. Despite centuries living among Hindus and Muslims, the Parsi had a distinct genetic profile, one that didn't match their neighbors. Their DNA was older, sharper, different. Two regions, two isolated groups, one religion. Could these distant populations, separated by over a thousand years of history and thousands of kilometers, still carry the same ancient signature? The race was on to extract viable DNA from those Persian bones and compare them directly to modern Zoroastrians in both Iran and India. It was a fragile process. Time and heat degrade genetic material quickly. But the desert had done what no empire could, protect the legacy. And when the first sequences were decoded, researchers held their breath. 
Was this the beginning of a forgotten genetic timeline, hidden in plain sight? The investigation was a blend of high-tech science and deep historical curiosity. Leading the charge were geneticists from Oxford, Tehran, and Mumbai, collaborating across borders, time zones, and belief systems. Their goal? To extract, sequence, and compare ancient DNA from Persian remains with samples from today's Zoroastrian communities. But it wasn't easy. The ancient bones had degraded after centuries underground. Extracting DNA without contamination required clean rooms, chemical precision, and painstaking isolation. Even a breath could ruin the sample. Meanwhile, collecting modern data from Zoroastrians posed its own challenges. Many were hesitant, wary of science interfering with faith, or suspicious of what the findings might reveal. Still, Sample after sample came in, from Parsi elders in Mumbai to firekeepers in Yazd. Blood, saliva, hair. Every strand a potential key. Researchers used mitochondrial DNA to trace maternal lines and Y-chromosome analysis to follow the fathers. Then came autosomal sequencing, painting a broader picture of ancestry and migration patterns began to emerge. A strong genetic bottleneck, limited admixture, deep Middle Eastern roots, and across all of it, a striking continuity. What they saw in the genes defied centuries of upheaval. How could two communities, split by exile and time, remain so genetically aligned? What social forces or religious doctrines preserved their DNA so perfectly? The results were undeniable. When scientists laid the ancient Persian DNA side by side with modern samples from Iranian Zoroastrians and Indian Parsis, a mirror emerged. The Y chromosome data revealed a dominant paternal lineage tracing directly back to ancient Persia, almost untouched by foreign admixture. In the Parsi, that lineage was shockingly intact despite over a thousand years in India. But the maternal line told a different story. While Parsi men carried unmistakably Persian ancestry, their mitochondrial DNA showed Indian roots, proof of intermarriage with local women early in their migration. This dual pattern confirmed what oral histories had long suggested. The Parsi arrived as male refugees, married Indian women, and preserved their Persian identity through strict community boundaries. In Iran, the Zoroastrian population showed even greater genetic isolation. For centuries, they had married within the faith, following ancient rules forbidding outsiders. This cultural firewall kept their genetic code astonishingly pure, even as the rest of Iran blended with waves of Arabs, Turks, and Mongols. Through blood and belief, they had resisted the world. And now, with modern science, that resistance had a name, a specific haplogroup, a timeline, a molecular story told in base pairs. The genome itself had become scripture, testifying to a spiritual legacy etched not only in books and fire temples, but in the bodies of the faithful. Imagine the final days of the Sassanid Empire. Fire temples still glowed in the twilight, priests chanted to Ahura Mazda, and sacred flames danced above desert altars. Then came the Arab conquests, swift, unrelenting, absolute. Temples were raised, scriptures burned, and Zoroastrians, once the spiritual rulers of Persia, became targets of persecution. Some converted, others went into hiding. But a small, determined group made a radical choice. Exile. They crossed deserts, boarded wooden ships, and sailed across the Arabian Sea to the western coast of India. There, in Gujarat, they asked for asylum, and were granted land on one condition, that they would not proselytize. They agreed, and in silence, they began again. These exiles, the first Parsis, kept their rituals alive, praying at dawn, tending to sacred fires, 
and burying their dead in towers of silence. They married within the community, preserved ancient customs, and passed stories across generations. Meanwhile, their cousins in Iran did the same, holding on to their faith amid growing isolation. Centuries passed. Empires rose and fell. The world forgot. But in the blood of their descendants, the memory endured, encoded in every cell. It wasn't just belief that survived. It was identity. Genetic memory. A legacy not written on stone, but carried silently through time, waiting to be read by the tools of modern science. And now, for the first time, that memory speaks. Zoroastrianism may no longer command empires, but its echoes are etched in the very DNA of its people. Not just in their prayers or temples, but in their blood. This genetic legacy reveals more than ancestry. It tells a story of resistance, memory, and faith that science is only beginning to decode. In an age obsessed with identity, the Zoroastrians offer a living blueprint of cultural survival, across continents, across centuries, through fire and exile. They remind us that history is not only written in books, it lives in us, and that sometimes the answers to ancient mysteries aren't buried in ruins. They're hiding in plain sight, pulsing beneath our skin. As researchers continue to map the genomes of ancient peoples, one question grows louder. What other legacies are locked in our DNA, waiting to be revealed? What forgotten empires, lost migrations, or hidden truths still linger in our bones? Perhaps the real story of humanity is yet to be written. Or perhaps it already is, encoded cell by cell in each of us. If this story fascinated you, Hit like, subscribe, and dive deeper into the mysteries of the past, because the future of history is genetic.